me, all the other plants and animals, fungi, all the protists, we are eukaryotes. We are made of eukaryotic cells. These cells are the most complex cells that nature has devised so far. You, me, we are the most complex biological systems that exist here on Earth, or at least that we know about that exist here on Earth. And we emerged from Archaea. And how we emerged is interesting. We, at some point, an Archaea cell engulfed a bacterial cell. And this bacterial cell, while inside the Archaea, became known as mitochondria. And then this became the eukaryote, the eukaryotic cell. And this mitochondria is the power, powerhouse of the cell, and it drives all of the functions that eukaryotic cells perform, which requires a lot of energy. So without it, it wouldn't exist. Complex systems like you and I would not exist had that not happened. And this complexity doesn't necessarily confer survival advantage. In fact, three billion years of the four billion, four and a half billion years of Earth's existence have been dominated by unicellular life, not complex systems. Anyways, the point is, all of these cells can be categorized in two domains the bacteria cells and the archaea cells. And they all came from a population of cells we refer to as our last universal common ancestor, or LUCA. And LUCA cells were competing and warring with viruses at the time. And at some, time, at some point, maybe even there was a mutualism between the two, and they benefited from one another. Um, also, it's possible that many or some there were several different lineages of cells that existed at the same time as LUCA or even predated it uh, that we will never uncover or we will never have physical evidence for because they withered away so long ago that there's no fossilized record of them. Their remnants are nothing but energy input into a different natural system and they are lost from the record permanently. Uh, Anyways, the point is that the LUCA cells and everything we've studied so far, which you can check out in previous videos if you haven't watched my other videos, are not the origin of life. The origin of life starts with what we call the protocell. This is the most primitive and simple functional cell that ever existed here on Earth. And the objective of this video is to explore this protocell, its structure, its function, how it came into existence. In fact, how it came into existence relies on the most fundamental unit of life on Earth, which is the organic molecule, or different variations of organic molecules. And how did organic molecules arise? Well, we have experimentally shown that you can arrive at organic molecules through the inorganic molecules undergoing various different reactions within certain environmental parameters or environmental conditions. And we've shown this experimentally, which is remarkable, and I can't wait to jump into that. Of course, where did all of these molecules come from? They came from a supernova, a, a, a star exploding and giving all of the molecules and atoms their, their ability to swirl around and clump together until they formed bodies of mass, which then also collided with massive amounts of energy until eventually the Earth formed and the Moon formed here in our solar system and the other planets, of course. But where did all of that come from? Well, all atoms we see in our solar system or in the observable universe originated from the Big Bang, specifically hydrogen atoms, slightly after the Big Bang. But we can't go further back than that because we don't know what happened. We don't have any evidence that we can look at prior to the Big Bang, but prior to the existence of time. In space, although it's possible that space and time actually existed prior to the Big Bang, but that's not the objective of this video. So we shall move on. Let's look at the protocell. And that's where we'll begin. Also, I will be making a 3D animation of the protocell in the future. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. That way you can be notified when that video comes and you can see a pretty cool animation, hopefully, of a protocell population. Now, the protocell like I said earlier, is the simplest cell that ever existed on Earth. 
it is really made up of three primary areas that give it its structure. We have a lipid membrane, which we call we are calling a vesicle. It, this vesicle encapsulated organic molecules that eventually and spontaneously gave rise to nucleic acids, probably RNA. And then also there were likely certain skeletal filaments that gave structure to this vesicle or protocell. And in fact, in 2023, we, we have experimentally shown in a predictable manner how you can get the skeletal filaments that would make structure for an artificial cell like the protocell. We can also synthesize other compartments in the laboratory in an artificial environment. But there is actually a limitation to what we've done so far in that we can't get them to all come together and function. We have never created a functional protocell in the laboratory. We've never even created a functional or artificial cell in the laboratory or in any, in any setting um, without the help of pre-existing cells. Something is missing in our understanding that glues everything together and makes a cell functional. Hopefully we can find out what that glue is, some sort of, we can call it um, coordination or structure that allows all of these pieces to come together in a way that allows it to move and propagate through space in a purposeful manner. Regardless, we can move on and describe this vesicle component, the prebiotic lipid membrane, which is made up primarily of monoacyl amphiphiles, we think, with either carboxylic, um, i.e. fatty acid ends or um, alcohol heads being the functional component of the molecule. And these lipids can be synthesized by a spark or some sort of discharge of energy. And we can also see them through Fischer uh, tropes reactions at high temperatures with metal catalysis, catalyst, excuse me. Um, but the more interesting part is not the structure necessarily, but what this structure confers that gives it an advantage of becoming a cell. Number one, it has spontaneous growth. The protocell is able to grow its membrane until it gets to a point where it reaches maximum capacity and environmental forces, specifically shear forces, can break this weak membrane once it's grown to a certain point. And then you get basically replication, reproduction of new vesicles, so new cells, um, which is very fascinating. So the way it may grow could be just adds one lipid molecule at a time. Uh, it was, that's possible. Also, it could have been a stepwise function where you had two vesicles already existing and then they came together and merged to create a bigger one. Um, eventually, that would break apart. So those are two mechanistic processes that may have led to spontaneous growth. And then once it grows, like I said, it would divide through shear forces. And so you could get a sort of division going on. And then the third important component of the membrane was that it allowed substrate to move across the, the membrane. And this substrate is crucial to forming everything that's interior to the, the protocell, such as organic molecules that will make up the nucleic acid. And that nucleic acid would be vital. So you have an RNA strand, which by itself would not be enough to have replication take place. So there must have been multiple organic molecules that could form a nucleic acid sitting inside a vesicle some, at some point. And the, the strands would come together. One would uh, function as a polymerase, the other as a template strand, and they could finally replicate. And this replication would allow Darwinian evolution to take place, which we know is necessary for cellular life to exist. So we have our RNA, we have our lipid bilayer, we have our skeletal filaments, and we have a protocell. But how did all this organic matter become available? Well, in 1950s, remarkably, two scientists are credited with discovering the formation of amino acids or organic molecules from inorganic molecules, which are prevalent throughout the solar system and 
it's phenomenal that the, these gentlemen were able to discover this um, with their flask experiment in which they had a reducing atmosphere and reducing conditions with hydrogen, allowing for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, maybe ammonia, uh, methane, some other nitrogen, but no oxygen. And then this could lead to the formation of amino acids. And then as we know, amino acids are building blocks for many of the cellular uh, compartments, such as proteins. And then this way, we could get organic molecules. And it's actually somewhat easier than we thought. And really cool, in 70 years later, in 2021, the several scientists discovered that the flask that Miller and Urey used was actually crucial to the production of organic molecules. They used a flask that had silicate uh, embedded on the flask that when in the temperature that they used uh, would would react with the the substrate that they had inside the flask. And this uh, facilitated the formation of organic molecules. And we experimentally showed this in 2021, which is so cool. So 70 years later, we show that they didn't have it exactly right. Um, they didn't really account for the flask material um, that they were using. And then, the, so now we know that actually silicon is actually pretty crucial. And there's a river in the Northern coast of California uh, that has similar conditions that we think were uh, available at the early Earth uh, time frame. And so you, you can go visit it. I, I forget what the river's called, but I'm sure you can look it up. <laughs> so we have, um, we have our protocell, and we have organic molecules that are somewhat easy to make. Another piece of example for the organic molecules is the uracil we're finding on asteroids. So we're even seeing, we're finding organic molecules forming in space itself. Uh, so it's, it's evidence is compiling, suggesting that creating organic molecules is somewhat easy. And so there you have it. You have the origin of organic molecules proliferating and allowing to form a protocell, the most simplest form of life, which resulted in everything we see today. Pretty cool.